Okay, so let's go ahead and figure out the solution to this interesting little math problem here. And of course, the first step when you want to solve any math problem is to read the problem. So let's go ahead and do that right now. It says uh, 16 is x plus 3% of 40. What is x? And uh, hopefully the first thing you notice when you're looking at this problem is that we are dealing with percent. So you're going to have to know something about how to solve various type of percent Problem. So if this problem is kind of confusing to you, what you want to do is just kind of stop and pause and think about your various um, skills in order to figure out different type of percent problems, right? So kind of calm your mind down, reread the problem, because at first glance, this does seem a little bit uh, confusing. But if you think you can figure this problem out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. And by the way, feel free to use a calculator if that helps you. But uh, anyways, I'm going to show you the correct result or the correct answer to this problem in a moment, and then I'm gonna walk through the step-by-step -step solution. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. I absolutely love helping people learn mathematics, and I'm gonna tell you right now, all of you could be successful in math, and I'm especially speaking to those of you that have a tough time in mathematics. Please do not give up. There's absolute hope, not only for you to pass a class if you happen to be taking a math class right now, but you can excel in math. But uh, here are the three things you need to be excellent in mathematics, okay? So the first thing is you got to be willing to work hard. You got to have a strong work ethic. There are no shortcuts when you study and learn mathematics. If someone's telling you, hey, you don't have to work that hard, uh, you need to run away from that person or thing. So that's the first thing you need. You need a strong work ethic. The second thing you need is encouragement, all right? You need someone telling you that you can do this stuff that you, uh, actually has some credibility. So here I am, a math teacher for several decades, and I'm telling you right now, you can do this, right? So you need to have some hope so you don't quit. But this is the most important thing you need, all right? You need great math instruction. So when you are learning from someone or something, you actually understand what's being taught to you. There's nothing more frustrating than sitting in the classroom and, you know, for 30 minutes or one hour, you know, instructions going by and you're totally lost. That's how people get frustrated. Now, math is a technical subject and it can be taught in a very technical way kind of like a boring way. The way I like to teach math is explain things in an easy to understand way so all people can understand what's going on without watering down the material. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that has math on it that you're getting ready for, something like the GED, SAT, ACT, maybe a teacher certification exam, or if you happen to be homeschooling mathematics, Check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave uh, links to my math notes in the description as well. Most students take average notes, but if you truly want to learn math, if you want to be great at math, you got to take great math notes. That is a skill. And... Um, Again, most of you out there uh, need to improve your notes. So you can use my notes in the meantime, if you like. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so 16 is X plus 3% of 40. What is X? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer right now. Okay, so X is equal to 37. That is the answer. So my question to you is, how did you do, okay? Well, if you figure this thing out and you're like, yeah, that's what I got, well, let's go ahead and celebrate your success with a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and a few stars so you can brag to your friends and family that you were able to conquer a nice, interesting percent problem. Again, percent, when it comes to uh, mathematics, this is one, you know, this is probably the number one math skill that you want to have down, okay, how to solve percent problems, because you literally cannot go through one day of your life, I would challenge you, without looking or avoiding this symbol, okay, so, you know, you go to the store, you're going to see sales, uh, if you turn on the news, you're going to be talking about inflation or credit card interest rates. If you watch a TV commercial, you're going to be, oh, this uh, cr credit card's at this percent. I'm just telling you right now, we are surrounded by this percent symbol. 
And uh, for those of you out there that may not be, you know, I would say adults, maybe you're, you know, still in high school or whatever the case is, as you get older, you're going to have to deal with money and finances and everything else. I'm just telling you right now, if there's one thing you want to know in mathematics, that is percent. Okay, so uh, that is the answer. X is equal to 37. Hopefully got that right. If you didn't get that right, don't uh, despair because I'm going to show you the actual answer or the steps to uh, this um, uh, question right now. Now, before I get into this, it's important that you have some basic foundational understanding of percent. I'll walk you through this, but uh, this is just going to be a quick um, kind of summary of some basic concepts you need to know. If you are already lost about basic percent, just some quick suggestions. One, I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel on percent. I'd also direct you towards my little math mini course. Uh, it's called my Math Foundations course. It's only three chapters, but I go through all basic mathematics, percent, fractions, and everything else. If you kind of need a quick refresher on mathematics, again, you can find that at my Math Help program. All right, so here is uh, the problem. 16 is X plus 3% of 40. So we're trying to figure out what X is equal to. But here's the thing. When you're looking at a problem like this and you're kind of confused by this X plus 3%, uh, what's going to help you, okay, when you don't understand a problem is to try to uh, try to find a problem that's similar to the problem you're trying to figure out, okay? So, for example, I'm like, all right, 16 is X plus 3%. This part right here is kind of confusing. But what if we were just trying to figure out this problem? 16 is what percent of 40? Now, this isn't the question, but let's make sure we understand how to do this problem because if we can't do this problem here uh, solve 16 is what percent of 40 then we're going to have a tough time figuring out our actual problem so in order to solve any percent problem you need to have an understanding of what percent is what's the definition of percent so let's go ahead and just take a look at a uh, few ways you can look at percent so technically okay the definition of percent is um, comparing a number to 100, okay? So uh, some number compared to 100, i.e., you're going to have a fraction where 100 is the denominator. That's kind of the definition of percent. So, for example, if I could p compare 7 to 100, where 100 is the denominator, okay, again, 100 has to be the denominator, 7 over 100, I can write that as 7%. Okay, so the definition of a percent is comparing a number to 100. Of course, I can write 7 over 100 as 7%. Now, how do I do that? Well, if we go into our calculators, you can take 7, divide that by 100, and you'll see you'll get the decimal point zero seven. Okay, now this is the decimal equivalent of this fraction, but I can write this decimal as a percent. Okay, so all of these are mathematically equivalent. And the way I go from a decimal to a percent is I simply multiply by 100 or I move that decimal point two places to the right. So hopefully this is like a review for you. But if you don't understand this, then this problem might be a little bit maybe, um, I don't want to say too advanced, but it might be uh, not, you need to do some basic percent problems in order uh, before you want to take on this problem, okay? So again, you need to have some basic percent skills in order to figure this uh, problem out. But another good way to think about percent is a part out of a whole, okay? Now, this is a, uh, a good example. If I asked you three is what percent of four, okay? So three is what percent of four, well, three is the part and four is the whole, okay? So that's another good model for you to figure out percent problems is think about part out of a, out of a whole. So three is what part of four? Well, I could just write that as a fraction, three over four. And then I could, of course, turn that into a decimal. Three-fourths is the same thing as 0.75 as a decimal. Of course, if you have your calculator, you can just take that three and divide it by four. Hopefully, you know that it's equivalent to 0.75. Again, I have a decimal. I need to write that as a percent by moving that decimal point two places to the right or multiplying by 100. So now I have 75%. Okay, so just a quick review on basic percent concepts. And there's other uh, things that I'm kind of like not reviewing right now. Again, you know, to uh, tackle this particular problem, you need to be able to solve a different type of percent problems. I think sometimes students and people think, oh, I know how to, I know how to uh, uh, do percent problems. So, for example, if I said find 6% uh, 
of 38, right? So most people deal with this, this, this type of simple problem all day long. Or like, oh, percent of a number just changes to a decimal, that's 0 0.06, and multiply by 38. You would be correct, okay? And of course, you can use your calculator to do that, but there's other type of percent problems. So this is a simple percent problem, but to do something a little more interesting, uh, like what we're doing here, you really have to have a full mastery of percent concepts, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at this problem, okay, here. So we're gonna get back to our actual problem. Let's go back to this problem though right here. 16 is what percent of 40? Okay, now before I show you the answer, let's see if you can figure this out. 16 is what percent of 40? Again, I uh, kind of gave you uh, some models here, something to kind of think about how you can figure this out. But let's go ahead and take a look at the solution right now. Now, 16 is what percent of 40? I can um, express this same problem or write this same problem with an algebraic uh, variable, okay? So I can say 16 is X percent of 40, okay? Now, X is what? It just represents some number. So I could translate this or I can think of this as 16 is what percent of 40? So don't let this variable scare you. And the only reason I brought this in is because we have a variable in our problem. So 16 is what percent of 40? Well, we wanna be thinking of a part, okay? And what is the part and what is the whole? Well, 16 is the part and 40 is the whole, right? So 16 is what part of 40? So I wanna write that as a fraction, 16 over 40. Now I can use my calculator and take 16 divided by 40. I get the decimal point four zero. And again, I could take that decimal and write it as a percent by multiplying by 100 or scooting that decimal point two places to the right. So 16 is 40% of 40. So X would be equal to 40. Okay, so how did you deal with this problem, All right? If you're able to figure this out, then that's excellent. And there's a couple of different ways you can approach solving percent problems. As long as you're not guessing, that's what counts. All right, so this is kind of like the first level problem that you need to do. But let's just think about it right now. So 16 is 40% of 40. Now let's go back to our original problem. Okay, so we know that 16 is 40% of 40, right? So 16 is 40% of 40. So this X plus three, right, is just represents some number. But what number does it represent? Well, it represents 40, right? It's 40%. 16 is 40% of 40. So what must X be? So it's X plus three. Well, X plus three must be equal to 40, okay? It's just some number plus three. Our answer has to be 40. So we just uh, write a simple algebraic equation. You can just kind of figure this out in your brain. We're like, well, X plus three if this X plus three must be 40, well, X then therefore must be 37. So that's how we can figure it out. So we can write a simple algebraic equation like this. X plus three is equal to 40. Uh, of course, X is equal to 37. We could just subtract three from both sides, or you can just kind of look at it and be like, okay, I know that uh, 16 is 40% of 40. Okay, what number plus three is 40? Well, again, 37. So, you know, when it comes to solving math problems, I think sometimes uh, students or people, um, they get overly intimidated and they think, uh, they get kind of um, uh, confused, all right? You know, they'll look at it like, well, I must do, I must, you know, I can't use common sense. I can't use basic logic to figure this thing out. That's not the case. Sometimes you have to stand back and be, you know, logical, right? Use some common sense and think about the problem. Now, you can't really do that unless you have a good, solid foundational understanding of the underlying skills involved. And again, when it comes to percent, uh, I would say most people out there have pretty good percent problems, okay? If they're like, yeah, I know what, because I, I deal with percent. Most people, you know, have, I would say, have average percent problems. But when it comes to a little bit more challenging, interesting percent problems, you know, some uh, people, you know, they just forget how to solve them. So I'm going to encourage you to really brush up on your percent uh, skills. Again, you can uh, check out my uh, additional videos on percent on my YouTube channel if you like my teaching style. I literally have tons of different types of uh, percent prompts. And, uh, you know, some of them are going to be easy. Some of them are going to be more interesting. So, um, you know, of course, you're not going to get better at percent 
by just doing easy problems, things that you already know. You want to challenge yourself with more, um, you know, of course, challenging prompts, and then also tie this into other concepts that um, are related to percent, which would be like how to work with fractions, decimals, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.